in this quick start guide, I'm gonna show you how to get up and running with the Canon R6 Mark II as quickly as possible. So when you open up the box, if you get the kit like I got with the 24 to 105 millimeter lens, this is pretty much what it looks like. Now you also do get a, a manual here. They give you a nice lens pouch here for the 24 to 105 lens if you wanna use that. I'm just gonna put it to the side though. You also get a nice neck strap here. Um, which I highly recommend putting on the camera if you don't have a neck strap. It just weaves through these black little notches here, but I'm not gonna put that on for now because I'm probably gonna be using this on gimbals and stuff. So it comes with this charger here. It's a, it's a really nice charger. And basically you just slide the battery in it. This is extremely easy to do, obviously, if you've never done anything like this, not that big of a deal. Has the little plug here on the back. All right, so when you put the battery in here, you can see by the blinking lights that uh, it's charging. Once it's at 100%, you can pick this video up. Looking at the bottom of the camera here, we have this door, this is the battery door. Now this is the tripod mount right here. This is where you put a tripod mount plate, for example, if you're gonna mount it to a tripod or something like that. Um, but anyways, right here is the battery door. So it's just a little lever here, slide that open, and the battery slides in like this, if you're looking at it like so. And just push it down, it's gonna lock into place. It's got this little white lever here and that's what will release the battery if you want to take it out see how that little white thing clicks over and if you close the door it automatically locks all right so looking at the side of the camera here this is where the memory cards go so you just got to slide this thing out like so and then it pops open and now we got dual slots here so if you just press in on the card it will pop the card out so this is the card that I like to use. Now there's all different manufacturers, guys. You don't have to use a SanDisk, but I would highly recommend getting a UHS-2 card like this one. Now you have slot one and slot two. It doesn't really matter which one you use. I was using slot two. I'm just gonna put it in slot one for now. You can also have this set up so you're doing redundancy. So if you're a professional shooter, which is one of the reasons why you might've gotten this camera, you can have one card for your main and then another card for your backup. So the second slot will just be a redundant slot. Uh, in my case, I'm just using one card right now because I'm not doing professional work. I'm just going out having fun taking photos and video. So, okay, so looking at the front of the camera here, we have the body cap. So this just rotates like so, and then you can take it off. And now here is the shutter mechanism. Underneath the shutter mechanism is the sensor, and by default, the shutter mechanism closes when you shut the camera off to help keep the sensor clean from dust. All right, so when mounting a lens, just gotta unscrew the lens cap here on the back, and notice how the lens has this red line, like a red dash. The camera body also has a red dash right there, so you need to line those up. Line up the red dash to the red dash, and then you turn the lens clockwise and listen for the click. There you go, it just clicked. So that is the lens lock clicking, and that's what this button is for. This button releases the lens lock. So if I press this button in, I'll be able to turn the lens. All right guys, so now we have the lens mounted. I just wanna take the lens cap off, and there's what the lens element looks like. That's the front lens element. And the lens hood actually has a button on it here. You can see this button. You have to press this button to release the lens hood. It's like got a lock. So you gotta release that, you can turn it around, and then mount it up, and now it's locked into place on the correct way. So you always wanna use a lens hood, make sure you put this on. It'll protect the lens in case you bump into something, but it'll also help with, you know, glare. All right, so just very quickly, I just wanted to show you how the lens works. You have to physically turn this if you're not aware. Again, some people are not aware, they're coming from point and shoot lenses, you might not know. You have to physically turn this lens. So it takes a little bit of effort, but here is the range, 24 all the way to 105, which is a phenomenal range. I highly recommend this lens. It's really, really good. Let's just go over really quick a couple of buttons on the camera. You have your on and off switch here. You have your shutter button here. So you're gonna press this button to take a photo and to focus. You have the main mode dial on the top of the camera. And over here, you have the photo and video mode. So here is the articulating screen. Now notice how you can close it and have it closed in armor mode. So you can swivel this out, swivel it around, and have it in armor mode. So if you put your eye up to the viewfinder, there's a sensor here that will automatically turn the screen off. And when you look through the viewfinder, it looks like a TV. It's really cool. Um, and that's awesome for photography. So you can use the LCD screen, of course, but it's also really nice to use the electronic viewfinder when you're outside. So highly recommend using that when you're taking photos and stuff outside. But again, the screen is super, help super helpful when you wanna get low to the ground or have the camera above your head. 
Now, one other thing I wanted to show you guys is over here, there's different ports and stuff depending on what you're doing. You have a remote control port down here, up here. I don't really like these rubber doors. They're kind of hard to open. You have the microphone and the headphone jack. That's where that is if you guys need that stuff. Over here on the side is where the HDMI ports are. So you can charge the camera by using the USB-C port here. And down here you have the micro HDMI. So if you're gonna go to a monitor or a TV or something, that micro HDMI port is what that's for. So that's right there. Now, a couple other things on the lens I just want to show you. you got stabilization on and off, manual focus right here. And on the side, you also have a lock switch. So if you don't want the lens to open, you can lock it closed and it won't open. So now the lens is locked and it will not open. All right, so up here is the mode dial. And depending on your skill level will highly depend on where you're going to want this mode dial set. Professional users tend to use manual mode for the most part. The camera is, it, it just has a lot of, tools built in is how I like to look at it. So depending on what you're doing, you can utilize the camera in so many different ways. For example, if you don't know how to use the camera and you're a beginner, highly recommend putting the camera on this auto mode here, A+. If you put it on A+, the camera can pretty much do everything. All you got to do is press this button to take a photo, press this button to record video, and it'll just work in this mode and the camera will do all the thinking for you. So another mode that's kind of cool if you're new to using cameras is scene mode. If you set the camera to scene mode, you can pretty much pick what scene you're in. For example, here's portrait mode. You can go in there and change that and you can select whatever scene you want. You see how it has mountains, it's got panorama mode, all sorts of cool stuff. So again, I just look at this as a different way of using the camera. You think of it like a tool, great for beginners. So I'm gonna put the camera in manual mode for now, just because this is a more professional grade camera. Here is the on switch. Now notice how there's a lock in the middle. If you have this on lock mode, that will turn the camera on, but when you turn the dials, they'll it'll tell you lock on the screen. I'll show you that in a second when I rotate the camera up. Um, and then, of course, if you go all the way to the right, that's just the on switch, and then all the buttons will be working and they won't be locked. So let's rotate this up now here. All right, so right now, like I said, I have the camera in manual mode, and I have the power button set to lock. Now watch what happens when I try turning these dials. You see how it's saying lock? See that right there? When I try to turn the dial, watch. See how it says lock right there? It's like not letting me do anything. That's because it's on the lock up here. So if I put it to full on, and I turn the dial. See how the aperture is changing right here? That's the aperture changing. Now if I turn this dial, that's gonna be the ISO. And if I turn the dial right here, the, this dial on top, if I turn that dial, that is gonna change the shutter speed in manual mode. So that's how it works by default. That is the Tri-Navi. And then of course you have this trigger up here, which will move your focus point around depending on which focus mode you're using. One other thing I wanted to show you guys when in manual mode is if you go into ISO here, you can actually scroll all the way over and go into auto. Now the camera is in auto ISO. So you can see here that the ISO is saying 25,600, but that's just because I'm pointing at the desk and it looks really dark. Um, but that's what the auto ISO is set to. And now what's really cool about the Canon R6 is if I turn the dial, I can actually override the auto ISO for any particular shot I want. And then if you want it to go back to auto, you can just go in here and now it's back in auto. And then if you hit the shutter button, you can see it just went back to ISO 25,600. So auto is an, works kind of differently on this camera for what I'm used to using the Sony cameras mostly. Um, but it's a pretty cool way to use auto ISO. And then if you want, you know, like I said, you can just override it. So I just wanted to show you a couple of ways to change some things. Now, for example, if you hit this Q button right here, see this Q button? This is where you can go to change all the key settings that you might want to change on this camera. And if you turn these dials, like this dial on the back, it will scroll through the different settings, you see? So this dial here with my thumb is gonna go through the different cue settings. And then if I switch to my finger and turn that dial, it's gonna change the individual options within whichever item is highlighted. So right now I'm in raw photo, for example, right? And you can see if I turn this dial on top, I can select JPEG if I want or have nothing. So right now I have it set to raw only. That's what the minus means. If I put it to L, now I'm shooting RAW plus JPEG. If 
I go back to the Q menu here and I go up to AF, this is the autofocus area. And I just wanted to show you how to put that back to where it was at default. Right here is where it is at default, whole area. So that's gonna use the entire sensor to focus and it's automatically gonna look for stuff to focus for. Now if I go back to the Q menu, and so now if you scroll down, this is your drive mode. I wanted to show you this really quick as well. If you're shooting sports and stuff, you're gonna want this drive mode set to a continuous shooting mode. So depending on how high speed the subjects are moving, you might wanna have it at the highest speed, for example, and so forth. But for default, I usually just have it set on low speed continuous. And this is also where your self timer options are if you wanna set the self timer. So now I'm in metering mode. This is where your white balance is. I have it set to auto white balance. Subject detect, this is another thing I wanna show you. I recommend setting your subject detect to auto and it'll automatically switch between humans, pets, automobiles. All right, so one other thing I wanna show you is this MFN button. See that right there? Multifunction is what that stands for. So when you press that button, it'll actually bring up a menu on the screen. Let me flip the camera up here. And now I'm gonna hit that button here, that multifunction button, and see how it brings up this menu. And now if I turn my finger here, it's gonna change the different options within that menu. So this is like the different creative modes or whatever you call it. A is where it normally is, default. Now if I use my thumb, so these are the different autofocus modes. I'm gonna put it back to a whole AF area. And then if I use this finger, my thumb, it's gonna go through the different options, as you can see. So this works very similar to the Q menu, how the different dials actually do different navigational purposes. And once you get the hang of it, you could really navigate this multifunction area pretty quick as well. And what's really cool about the uh, multifunction menu, it might be a little bit easier to use when you have your eye up to the viewfinder, as opposed to using the quick menu and the larger screen, you know what I'm saying? And now we're gonna go into the menu here. And notice these dials, each dial does something different. So this dial here with your thumb will do the very top row. See that? Now this dial on the back will do the actual menu itself. And then this dial up here where your pointer finger is will do the sub row. You see that? So you got the top row, the bottom row below that, and then you have the menu itself. So once you get used to that, you can really navigate these menus quickly. So in the menu, you're gonna to wanna to set your date and time. You really wanna have this set up because when you import your photos and stuff in, onto your computer, you'll be able to look at them by date, you know? So this is really important to have set up. For me, the today's date is 12-9-2022. Now the hour here, if I go into here, is actually nine o'clock in the morning. So I'm gonna change this to nine. It's actually 9.40, believe it or not. So that was kind of cool that it was set to 40 there. Uh, you could also just touch around to change these things or select them. So I'm just gonna set that up, click OK. So now I have the date set. But anyway, in here is where you can select your image quality. I showed you how you could do that a second ago in the queue area, but it's a little bit easier to do in here. You have more, it's like easier to see, you know? So here, if I wanted to shoot JPEG instead of RAW, for example, I could do minus and then do JPEG. Now the camera is set up to shoot in JPEG mode. If I wanna do RAW plus JPEG, I just do that. Now I have RAW enabled and JPEG enabled. The way I like to shoot is just RAW though. So I'm gonna hit the minus there and now I have it set for just RAW. And here over here is compressed RAW if you wanna use that. All right, so now I basically have the camera set up for taking photos, but I wanna set the video settings. So if you switch the top dial here to video mode, like so, you could see how the interface on the screen changed a little bit. So now I have a record button there, for example, you can press if you wanna start recording, but I just wanna show you in the menu here, and now notice how the menu actually changed. So now I have a menu accommodating video. So here is where you would go and change your record settings. So in here, these are all the different options. And I would recommend using 4K at 24P. That's what I tend to use most. Now, there's different options for 4K 24P, as you can see. You have a compressed version and a non-compressed version. So you could use either or, but I tend to use IPB. I'm just gonna leave it set to that. Um, but notice if you go to the other setting to the right, if I go over one, you could see the total record time. So using this more compressed version, I'm getting three hours and 30 minutes recording time. If you look at the less compressed version, I'm only getting an hour and 45 minutes. So that's what these different modes mean. And it kind of gives you a visual indication with that little arrow. You see how it looks like it's compressing the file with that little arrow. 
So that's kind of how that works. And what's in blue there is telling you where it was. So now I have it set to 4K 24P. If I go back in there, you can see now the 4K 24P is blue. Now, if you want 60p, you can see how it says 59.94. That would be your 60p option, which is full frame on this camera, and it's unbelievably awesome. So I'm going to set OK. Now, if you want the higher frame rates, like 120p, for example, you have to enable it first. So if you go in here and hit Enable, now we have high frame rate on, and you can see how the option changed. Now it says 120 up there, 119.9. So if we go in there, now we're going to have the high frame rate options. This is where the slow motion stuff is. So Canon calls it high frame rate. So you can set that like so. Now I'm going to turn high frame rate mode back off, disable, and it's unfortunately it defaults back to 60 frames per second. You see that? That drives me crazy about the Canon cameras and this is why I'm showing you this because it might confuse you as well. So because once you enable high frame rate and then disable it, it automatically defaults back to 60 frames. I don't know why it doesn't go back to what I had. I had it set to 24. So I'm just making you aware of that. You got to go back in here and select the mode that you want. That's the one I want, 24p, 4k. So let me show you how this actually works um, when I try to take some photos and videos. All right. So if you look over here at the screen, I know it's a little bit smaller here, but I want to also so you can see my finger and stuff. So watch what happens. I'm in photo mode right now and I'm in manual mode. So what I'm going to have to do is it's kind of dark. So I'm just going to hit the info button. Remember the button on the back of the camera that says info. If I hit that, I could bring up the histogram and you can see how underexposed the image is because the, the lines are all the way to the left. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to raise my ISO up here by turning the thumb dial to make the scene a little brighter, something like that. All right. Now that the screen's a little brighter, I can show you what I'm trying to do here. I'm just going to turn the info. I'm just going to hit the info button here to get it back to this screen. All right, so there we have it. So now if I just press the shutter button, it's automatically going to pick what to focus on. And by default, you could see it's focusing right here. That is like the focus, the closest line of contrast to the camera. And that's what it's choosing to focus on. But you can just touch wherever you want. See, I just touched the screen. Now it's focusing on the chart. And I'm just pressing the shutter button down halfway. If you press it all the way, it takes a photo. So this is a dual stage button here. It's got the focus and then all the way. Now there is another button on the back of the camera called AF on. You could press that with your thumb as well. And that will do the same thing as pressing the shutter button halfway. So if you're a back button focus shooter, for example, that's how that works. Now to cancel the touch, because I touched the screen now. So now the focus is kind of locked there. You just have to hit this button up here. There's a little off button on the top. So watch if I touch the screen, you see how up here, this little button showed up and that's letting you know that you enabled touch focus. So I'm just going to turn that off and now it goes away. See? All right. So when in manual mode, this is the meter and that's how that works. So it's going to tell you if the image is underexposed, if it's to the left, it's going to tell you if the image is overexposed to the right. Now the screen automatically dims after like 30 seconds or whatever, but if you hit the shutter button, it'll rebrighten. So one of the thing I want to show you here guys to, to get you going uh, as quickly as possible, if you hit the Q menu and you go and you turn the dials here to AF mode, if you select this option here on the bottom, like so, see that? I have that selected. Now you can see the focus point is just that little square. You see that tiny little square? It's turning green. But on the back of the camera, you got the joystick. You can just move that focus point around using the joystick. And this is how you get super, super precise focus. So again, I like having it just default the whole screen to let the camera choose. If that doesn't work, then I will touch where I want it to focus. Now, if that's not working for you, this is an even more precise way to dial in your focus. Watch what happens when I zoom in here. All right. So now I'm zoomed in and notice how it's focusing on the edge of the chart. I want it to focus on the middle of the chart. So I'm just going to touch on the middle. Now it's going to focus on the middle of the chart. It's that simple. That's how it works. So there we go. I just took a photo. Now, if I hit the playback on the back of the camera, that's the little playback button here. There's the photo. And now if I hit the info button, it'll give you more information about the shot. And if you hit the info button again, it'll show you the histogram and even more information as to how the camera was set up. So if you want to zoom in, you could use this thumb dial to turn and zoom in on the image, but you can also pinch to zoom. If you want, you can just pinch like so. 
Now, if I want to record a movie, I can just hit the record button and it started recording. Now notice, I did not switch the camera into video mode. I recommend putting it in video mode, but I'm just showing you this because you don't actually have to. So I'm going to hit the record button again to stop recording. Now I'm going to switch it to video mode. And again, I recommend putting it in video mode, okay? Because you, it's just the camera is more optimized for video. And when you hit the quick menu button, you're gonna have more video focused settings in there. So I highly recommend putting it in video mode, but I just want you to be aware you don't have to. So that's how that works. And then again, if you hit record, now the camera is recording. And the reason why the lights are all blinking is because they're LEDs, just so you're aware. Sorry, it's a little bit, of, a little bit distracting there. But again, that's how you would record video and you can change your settings while you're recording video, quite powerful. And um, that's pretty much how that works. Now, if you hit the playback button, you can go into the menu and you could watch your video. So same as the photo thing, you pretty much go in there and I can just hit the play button with my finger, the video will start playing and so forth. And you can see your navigation is up there. And you know, that is pretty much the basics of how this camera works. Now, again, there are so many settings inside this camera to get even more power out of it, to dial it in in various ways. If you're a wildlife photographer, portrait photographer, landscape photographer, HDR shooter, time-lapse, there's so many features that this camera has. So let's get out there and start shooting. Uh, take some video, take some photos, enjoy your new camera. And like I said, when you're looking to learn more, come back for the more advanced guide where I will just walk you through all the stuff that this camera can do in much more more detail. So, all right, have a great day. I will catch up with you guys next time.